Hello, hello, welcome back. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> so first of all, apologies for um, taking so long to do another video, a new video. It's been really busy with work and uh, holidays and things. So, um, but I'm back and uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everyone for posting comments on the videos on the other videos. It's super, super helpful for me to know what um, you want, you know, and um, and also it's been fantastic. I've had uh, emails from New Zealand and Cyprus and Brazil and India, and it's just fantastic uh, to hear from you guys. So um, keep it up and um, yeah, make sure you write in the comments to tell me about um, what would be useful for you to know about. So, uh, I've had a request to do an inter external scene, so um, I dug out this old project that I did, um, which uh, I thought would be perfect, because it's got a landscape, and it's really simple geometry, and it's a pretty cool design from a client of mine um, called uh, Make Architects, and so I'll dive right in. Um, so this is uh, this is these uh, visuals I did years ago um, for um, planning and to show the client. So I um, this was actually um, back in in 3D Studio Max here. This was actually originally a SketchUp model that I was given, and um, I think you can export in, from SketchUp to Unreal Engine, but it's um, a bit tricky with the old UV mapping problem. So I know that some of you don't know what that is. So I am preparing to do a video on that subject. Uh, but so basically what that means is that I've remodeled the, um, uh, the original SketchUp file um, in 3D Studio Max so that I knew exactly what was going on so that each I can break up each object exactly how it needs to be so that it's manageable um, back in Unreal Engine. Um, so for example these floor slabs you know I break them up originally it, it was just one thing these uh, these these roofs as well um, they weren't modeled um, you know, in polygons, um, sort of using booleans and things like that. So um, it get, it creates a bit of a mess. And um, I think when you deal with real time, it's not really good to have mess, I think. Uh, although I'm quite a messy person. But <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I mean, really simple model. Again, I think it's, it's just uh, simplicity is always what helps us. And then uh, materials it was um once i did a visualization it was v-ray so i had to transfer it back to uh, to standard uh, materials and really literally all i took is the the diffuse map and stuck it back into that standard material um so yeah well, the other thing that we've got in this project is is this uh big land this field around the house so uh, that's from google map uh, applied and then um, I'm going to import that back into Unreal Engine as well. So um, what else can I say? The texture maps, um, yeah those furniture, bits of furniture. So I found a um, script which is fantastic, UE4 FBX exporter uh, on script spot here. Um, and especially made for UE4, so it puts everything in its place. Um, you can choose to move each object to point zero before you export it, so that's I really like that. Um, and then it keeps your path, your export path. Uh, so I highly recommend that. Uh, just look for it on uh, script, script spot. So, I mean, I've been using it. It doesn't really um, can't fault it at the moment. It works really well. Um, and then, um, so shall I just uh, jump over to Unreal Engine? And so here, the landscape, I'm going to do another video. Um, here, I'm just going to talk about the house uh, to keep it short. And um, so the house 
just came in really easily, no problem. The uh, for the textures, really, they're very simple. Again, I've, to be honest, they, they just come in and they look great. So I've just got this was straight from from 3D Studio Max. Uh, I've added this and the specular and this normal map. I just thought I'd tell you my little secret about normal maps that I use. Crazy Bump, uh, which is this uh, really nifty little program I bought ages ago. Uh, I think it's still on works, but you can have that for free in Photoshop. There's an NVIDIA plugin to do normal maps, but the thing about Crazy Bump is that it does these other maps, um, which are really useful, um, and then you can really sort of uh, change the... Um, you know the resolution and then the the height of your displacements and of your um, normal maps and everything. So I use that a lot, and that's great. Um, so for materials, really simple. The the most complicated one that I've started to work on was really um, the glass. So let me just show you what I've tried to do for the glass. I've got a um, normal material which is um, uh, where is it which is called glass but as I explained in one of my other videos you know what the problem when you do materials is that you've got to make a change and then you click uh, save or apply and then you have to wait for the viewport to update and everything so there's this fantastic thing which is to do an instance material and um, please check my other video for that and um, so I've created uh, a glass which uh, uh, this instance material which enables me to change these um, parameters in real time so that's really useful and the secret for this one was to use a box reflection capture rather than a sphere reflection reflection capture, which makes sense because we're sort of facing um, orthogonal material, uh, orthogonal planes. So that's um, and I think the uh, resolution is higher, and so that's worked sort of quite well for this glass, I thought. And another one, you can, um, in this box reflection, you can increase the brightness of the reflection. So you can really play with that. So it's quite good. Um, another thing that I've done here is I've um, hidden the sphere. Uh, we've got the clouds here, which are quite nice. But I don't know. I, I like this sort of um, pure blue sky. Now that's uh, that's that for the uh, material. So for the lighting, I've got this uh, skylight um, set on quite high, eight there, and then the light source being the sun, obviously, um, as well. It's quite it's quite high on six. So um, yeah, that that can change, and obviously we need to rebuild the lighting when we change that. Um, Again, so I really want to talk about the landscape, but I'm going to talk about it in another video. And um, the uh, post-process volume, which I can never say, post-process volume. What I the main thing that I've done here is to um, put a to find. Finally, I found out this color grading. Where is it? Um, scene color there you go um, this LUT table because I could never quite work it out because it, it just didn't do the right thing um, it didn't look right and I found how basically so if you type LUT UE4 in Google and you will find exactly this page which tells you all about color grading uh, which tells you how you can um, basically do your color correction in Photoshop and use that um, in Unreal Engine and it works really really well. I 
follow the instruction and it didn't work for me so I found out why and the problem being that when you import this little bar you have to change this color to color it kind of comes in as world or whatever or something else and then you have to change it to color lookup table here and then you put it in your scene color and uh, if I take it off you know it, it makes I have hardly did anything in Photoshop but it makes a big difference I thought um, here it's just a contrast really but that's that's what I did in levels but um, it really made a big difference for the uh, for the final output so there you go um, I think that's um, I think that's it. I'll see you in another video where I'm going to talk about the landscape because otherwise it's going to take forever. Um, but um, yeah, I hope that was useful. And as usual, please subscribe. Anything else, um, if you'd like to me to go into more detail of, on anything, please um, say something in the comments and I shall see you in the next video.